concept of American ingenuity is so ingrained in our culture that we suppose that we have a monopoly on innovation. But creative arrogance is a dangerous thing. Not only does it close off the free flow of new ideas, it kills the single most important element of innovation, altered perspective. Novel concepts, new solutions, inventive approaches to old problems don't spring forth out of thin air. They happen when you look at a situation from a different angle. That's what happened on the island nation of Singapore, and it led to one of the most successful approaches to technical education in the world. The Institute of Technical Education, or ITE, was once seen as a place of last resort for low academic achievers. It is now an institution of choice in Singapore for 25% of students. The turnaround came in the 1990s when the Singapore economy boomed and needed a highly skilled workforce. This changed the way political and educational leaders viewed those students who did not do well in the classroom. Instead of being seen as academic failures, these young people were viewed as experiential learners who blossomed in a hands-on technical environment. This single shift in perspective, combined with a massive restructuring of ITE, has made Singapore the envy of the world. What you are about to see is an educational system so successful that Singapore has one of the lowest youth unemployment rates in the world, with over 90% of graduates finding jobs in their chosen field. The concept of American ingenuity is so ingrained in our culture that we suppose that we have a monopoly on innovation. But creative arrogance is a dangerous thing. Not only does it close off the free flow of new ideas, it kills the single most important element of innovation, altered perspective. Novel concepts, new solutions, inventive approaches to old problems don't spring forth out of thin air. They happen when you look at a situation from a different angle. That's what happened on the island nation of Singapore, and it led to one of the most successful approaches to technical education in the world. The Institute of Technical Education, or ITE, was once seen as a place of last resort for low academic achievers. It is now an institution of choice. The turnaround came in the 1990s when the Singapore economy boomed and needed a highly skilled workforce. This changed the way political and educational leaders viewed those students who did not do well in the classroom. Instead of being seen as academic failures, these young people were viewed as experiential learners who blossomed in a hands-on technical environment. This single shift in perspective, combined with a massive restructuring of ITE, has made Singapore the envy of the world. What you are about to see is an educational system so successful that Singapore has one of the lowest youth unemployment rates in the world, with over 90% of graduates finding jobs in their chosen field. Singapore was a former British colony established in uh, 1819, but uh, historically we only gained independence in 1965. That means uh, we have a history of about uh, 42 years of independence. Well, you know, the first fact that uh, we must recognize about Singapore is that uh, we've got no resources. It's a small island, relatively flat, and it's got people. So people are our only resource, which is why it's so important to discover talents in every individual. He may not have an academic talent, but he's got something else. In IT, right, I'm taking the course electronic, electronic engineering. Yeah, it's a course about learning all electronic de uh, devices. Different kids have different ways of learning. Yeah. Not everyone learns best in an academic mode. Some people learn well by doing things with their hands, by doing something applied, something practical. The nursing attracted me because um, for about four, three to four years ago, my brother was diagnosed with cancer. And then I was in, like, in the hospital with my brother most of the time and saw how nurses actually took care of him and it, that kind of inspired me to be a nurse. So that's how I... And I, I went online, apparently IT. 
you know, have the cost that's available for me. In looking back at the history of 15 or 20 years, the image of vocational technical education was really bad. Negative, associated with failures in schools, people who don't make, who don't do well, not motivated, and therefore they are looked down upon. There was much uh, societal uh, prejudice, you know, and, and against such students. Asian societies generally revere the academic, and it didn't come naturally to be able to persuade parents that a non-academic skill, a technical skill, was valuable, was something to be sought after. I think in those days, uh, if you were a dropout, you go to ITE. So most parents associate going as a place of, well, last resort, really. Uh, ITE, back then, uh, called by another name. Uh, the facilities are pretty simple. People coming do not have uh, the secondary education. A lot of uh, dropouts. I think they start to rethink, you know, what they should do. A very fundamental change when ITE was set up in 1992. Make sure that uh, all the students that we uh, take in would have the 10 years of uh, education, general education, before they come to ITE. Singapore, we are just a, a small tiny island, just a small dot, but we could manage to do everything well. Lah. So every one of us here in Singapore, there are different kind of opportunities for you out there. Well, 10, 15 years ago, we were seeing significant structural change. Uh, there were more jobs that require well, high are, level of skills. Um, in the society, there are always demand for people doing all the technical stuff. I think it's good that they actually created each field for technical stuff. We started to look at how we need to transform the system in order to make it attractive to society, to employers, and also to make it uh, meaningful for this component of our education system that really represent the lower 25% of a school cohort in Singapore. Well, the, the major change in our system was in the early 1990s when we instituted within our secondary schools a track that was oriented towards technical education so that kids at age 13 were taking a blend of both academic as well as technically oriented subjects suited to their academic aptitudes, but also suited to the fact that many of them have got real talents which are only discovered when you put them onto something technical. So that was a major shift in our system, which had hitherto been a purely academic system. The first goal was really to establish the vocational technical education at a post-secondary level. Today we're going to do a practical session on the chest tube insertion. In education, okay. there are many and important factors which will ensure the success of the system. But in the context of vocational technical education, one very important key is how well our staff are equipped and do they have the heart and care for the student that they look after. We provide them the nurturing environment for them to gain knowledge, to gain respect, to gain certain values that they will require when they go out and move out into the future. All right, so we will actually send you for an x-ray just to double check that the chest tube is in place. Okay? Again, bearing in mind, we are talking about the students who, don't, who are not academic in their studies, but who are talented in other ways. The students who need a different pathway, a different uh, approach in order to uh, stimulate their interest, their confidence, and to be able to do well. First of all, you must always give them the respect because they have already have very low self-esteem. So in order to give them the real self-esteem, we have to motivate them, give them the trust that they can trust you, you can trust them, and that is where it starts from. Mm, yeah, not that, not that well during secondary school times. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got a bit problem with my mathematics. But when it comes to practical, right, by using your hand, you could learn even better by using while, while, while you're fixing things, by reading the instruction that they have given, it goes through your mind. So once when the teacher asks you a few questions about it, you can answer it very well. We are training them to be technically competent so that after, even though they do not go for higher learning, they are competent enough to do some programming which is useful to the industry of Singapore. Education is one of the most important factors in helping to grow the economy of a nation. And from that perspective, our government has always believed in education, and in particular vocational and technical education. But having said so, the training system must be properly aligned in order to serve the needs of the economy. Well, the link between the ITE and industry has been quite fundamental to its success. First, the fact that the companies that employ ITE graduates are themselves stakeholders in the ITE. They get involved in curriculum design, they get involved in specifying the type of equipment that should be used, and a large proportion of the lecturers in the ITE come from industry. ABB basically is uh, power, 
an automation company, it's an engineering company. So where we are looking for people, we want to be sure that first they must have the knowledge, they can be adapted easily. We, we have very close partnership with the industry. We talk to the industry experts, what are the, the, the duties and tasks that is required for a particular job. We draw a competency chart, we convert that to a skill standards and from there we deliver the course. In the case of IT, for example, information technology, we are partners of IBM and what this means is that they are committed to put some of the equipment in our system here. They are also committed to help develop a training program jointly with our staff and in that sense their the qualification will be even more relevant and more up-to-date when they seek jobs in the market. All the students from the region who study in Singapore at ITE, they come to work, it fits us very well. been in this electrical industry for the past 10 years and the fundamental knowledge given by ITE to us trained us well. I think one of the main problems in vocational technical education is the image. And that's the reason why the parents, the school leavers, even the teachers themselves do not perceive vocational training at the highest level. But how do you transform the system? How do you transform the image? In our own experience, we find that the physical environment is one of the most important factors to change mindset, to change the image of the public. The real breakthrough came in uh, 2005 when the first uh, comprehensive campus of uh, IT was developed, and this is where we are now. There are four schools, basically. A school of engineering, school of information technology, school of health and life sciences, and also business and services. If you look at the IT today compared to a, a decade and a half ago, it's not just a place with laboratories and uh, uh, health labs. Uh, it's a place with a running track, with first-class sports facilities, first-class music facilities, it's a place where, if I'm a young kid going there, I feel like I'm going to a university like any other. I'm being developed all round, but I'm also developing some pretty deep, specialised skills. The development of this new campus not only gives them the visible impact, but it also provides opportunity for the students to raise their self-confidence and self-esteem. We work on the students' strength. For example, they are very good in sports. They are very good in performance arts. We created a platform for them to showcase their talents. And when they are recognised by their peers, they, they feel good. And from there, uh, they want to commit themselves to excel in their vocation and technical education. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up. I would say Singapore would not be able to attract major investments if we do not have a pool of highly qualified, highly trained technicians and skilled workers. Because no matter how you look at it, if you are going to put a billion dollar investment capital in petrochemicals, in life sciences, you want to make sure that the people who are going to mend the system, who are going to maintain it, are going to be people who are highly professionally trained. And this is where I think ITE plays the biggest role. is not so much in the numbers or the statistics of success but when you meet an individual who succeeded because he took an alternative path did well and proved to everyone that it's not just one talent that counts but it's different talents that make up a society and make up a country that keeps looking to the future Than I, than I can be